How's it going, everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge 5000, and in this video, of course, we're going to talk more about this next potential Christmas blizzard that could bring over a foot of snow over a large portion of the Midwest and the Northeast. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more what they call it. So let's begin by taking a look at the latest run of the GFS model, where we have seen a pretty big shift with the uh, computer model's trajectory of this storm, where now we're seeing a shift a little bit further westward with the low pressures, which means that it's bringing more of the heaviest snow further inland, and we're seeing a little bit more rain in train the Interstate 95 corridor. If we were to take a look at the snowfall forecast from the GFS model, we still do see a very significant amount of snow throughout the eastern half of the United States, and we see the southeast also get involved, where Arkansas, Tennessee could get involved with over six inches of snow, and if I were to continue to move forward, we see just a very heavy amount of snow right around the extreme western portion of the northeast, and we see a very heavy snow as well. Um, extend into um, some of the Midwest states such as Ohio and Indiana where the southern portion of those states experience over 12 inches of snow in this scenario. However, I want to point out that there's still a lot of time to really iron out the forecast, but I'd, I'd say it's becoming increasingly likely that with this trough that's expected to move into the United States by Christmas time frame, we're likely to see major snowfall somewhere in the United States. The, really, the big question remains where because because will we see this storm move a little bit further westward and bring more heavy snow to the Midwest? Or will we see more snow further eastward right up along the East Coast? There's still a high level of uncertainty regarding where exactly that low pressure will track. Because we're, there are still around 7 days out um, between now and when this snowstorm would occur. So of course there's going to be quite a bit of variables we're going to need to pay close attention to. To really determine the trajectory of this storm. If we were to take a look at the GFS model once again so like I said in my previous video, as this trough continues to move eastwards and exits the northeast, we're going to see a strong level of northwesterly winds that are going to bring that Arctic air further southward into the United States, and that could set the stage for an unstable environment to develop in the United States. If I were to continue to move forward, we see a low pressure system eventually move into the Midwest, and we see some snow showers right around the upper Midwest, and we see thunder showers um, right around the southeast, and this area of thunder storm activity is expected to eventually merge with this next clipper system because we're gonna have the original low pressure system of this um of this area of thunder shower activity move southward but we're gonna see but the gfs model forecasts that there's gonna be a piece of energy associated with this chop that's gonna stick around and move a little bit further northward as a result of a ridge that's building right around the western atlantic that's gonna try to steer it towards the northeast and that will set the stage for an unstable environment to develop because we have a very warm core area of thunder showers move into the Carolinas while we have this clip system at the same time that's going to be forced to move southward as a result of a ridge that's over the southern portion of Canada that's going to steer the man, man, that's going to steer the northwesterly winds um further um, into the United States and steer the storm um, further southward to interact with this piece of energy where we do see a very warm core, a low pressure system merge with a Arctic um, trough which is going to create just a highly unstable environment for this storm to, um, to for this storm to rapidly intensify and become a full-fledged blizzard in some areas. Now there's still uncertainty with the track because it really all depends on how strong and suddenly winds will be as this low pressure system approaches which is the southeast because if we detect that the southerly winds will be a little bit stronger um, as the low pressure system approaches southeast and we're more likely to see the jet stream winds sort of position itself to a point where the where the jet stream winds will face more from a southerly direction which would store which would force this low pressure some further northward a lot quicker which would mean that we're more likely to see the eastern half of the the at least the east coast of the united states experience more of a strong southerly flow that would bring the, the warm temperatures right up along the coast and that would primarily make it more of a rain event from the interstate 95 corridor cities however if we detect that the southerly winds aren't necessarily as strong as expected like the GFS model was suggesting in its previous run then we're more likely to see the jet stream um, stay further southward before eventually turning northward and that would mean that the northeast would experience a backside and quarter side of this old pressure system where the winds would be coming from the north and that would 
create the possibility for a major um, um, snowstorm and blizzard, Christmas blizzard for those cities along the Interstate 95 corridor. So the position of this soil pressure system will be key in determining where exactly the heaviest snow will fall. As there is a possibility this this soil pressure system could move even further westward to where maybe Illinois gets more involved in. This will be primarily more of a Midwest threat. That's what the European model has been suggesting as of the latest run where the European model is expecting a track that's well further westward of the GFS model where we primarily see the heaviest snow impact more of the Illinois, um, Iowa, and Missouri area and we do see some heavy snow right around Chicago as well, Minnesota, Wisconsin, all get involved but we see that pretty much for maj most of the northeast you're experiencing pretty much an entirely a rain event as of course this the, G the European model expects a solely winds on the eastern half of this um, storm to be strong enough to steer this northward very quickly so the east coast would primarily experience the warmer side of the soil pressures which would make it more of a rain event so still a uh, pretty high level of uncertainty now especially since now both of the computer models have had made have had made stark contrasts when it comes to their forecast so there's definitely going to be a high amount of uncertainty and we're going to need to pay close attention to this over the next several days of course how far south the soil pressure system will um will move will be key as well that will determine how strong this will get and how much it'll interact with the very warm um gulf of mexico air mass and that would um and that would enhance the instability and the convection around this soil pressure system so we're going to need to wait and see just a lot of variables to keep in mind gonna um gonna need to pay close attention to this trough moving right around southeast and where ex and how far n east or west this moves because if it moves a little bit further westward we're more likely to see the warmer air filter in along the eastern uh, along the east coast for the snow to be centered more towards the midwest while if this low if this um area of thunderstorm ac activity were to move a little bit further eastward then we're more likely to see that cold and snow move up along the interstate 95 corridor city so just because we have seen a pretty big difference with the forecast bringing mostly rain along the coast with the european model and somewhat with the gfs model um that does not mean that's that the interstate 95 corridor will be completely out of the woods just yet because there's still a lot that could change with the forecast i mean just saying look at the previous one we see a major snowstorm impact all the interstate 95 corridor cities the gfs model has been leaning towards a west word track um as of the latest run but there's still gonna be um uh, uh, my best bet is that we're still gonna see like many changes with the forecast over the next several days so make sure to keep that in mind but i will say that it's becoming increasingly likely that somewhere in the united states you will experience a major blizzard we're just gonna need to determine where exactly as it seems like there's gonna be enough instability associated with this trough moving southward and enough cold air behind it to create a highly unstable environment for a significant snow storm to develop somewhere around the east or around the eastern half of the united states by the christmas time frame so we're just gonna need to wait and see where it exactly develops so i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days taking a look at what the european model is forecasting when it comes to snowfall um as of the latest run so if we were to take a look at the european model scenario we do see that most of the snow will be a lot further westward where chicago milwaukee could experience over a foot of snow and some areas in milwaukee could experience it's over two feet of snow in this scenario while you see that michigan also gets heavily impacted minnesota iowa missouri more of the midwestern states so definitely all throughout pretty much anywhere that's just to the um east of the let's say iowa and nebraska border that's where you need to pay um be aware of the possibility of a significant blizzard because it's certainly possible whether it's going to occur in the midwest or in the northeast and even the southeast could get involved with some snow if the gfs model is correct taking a look again at the gfs models forecast when it comes to snowfall accumulation you see that the gfs model expects a heavy um is expecting the heavier snowfall a little bit further westward than its previous one but we still do see snow right around boston i'd say around three six inches of snow in boston new york city is just outside of it but we see other major cities such as buffalo cleveland cincinnati um, louisville kentucky get involved as well as memphis um, little rock arkansas all those all these cities could get involved with very heavy snowfall but we're just 
gonna need to wait and see how the um the where the position of the low pressure system will be to really determine who will get the worst impacts now take a look at the negative at the negative north atlantic oscillation we do see that we're still deep in this phase and it's expected to continue even headed into early january so we're more likely to see colder and snowier than average conditions as we approach the end of december so which is might likely the reason why both the computer models are expecting a major blizzard to impact the united states somewhere around the christmas time frame we're going to be in negative north atlantic oscillation which means that we're more likely to experience colder and snowier than average conditions during the end of december so even if you don't necessarily receive snow from this christmas blizzard there could of course be a possibility we see another snowstorm beyond um this christmas blizzard that could bring a heavy amount of snow to your area so make sure to be aware of that um of pretty much this phase because we're more likely to see cold and snow throughout the united states as a result of it now take a look at my new snowfall accumulation forecast for this extreme christmas blizzard which i think is becoming increasingly likely but in terms of what who will experience a heavy snowfall still definitely has yet to be seen but as of right now i'm expecting over two feet of snow right along the great lakes which is certainly possible it could change um 12 24 inches um as it stands right now based on what the gfs model is stating right around ohio indiana um west virginia even pittsburgh could get involved upstate new york could get involved with over a foot of snow 6 to 12 inches just the south of it and we see this heavy snow move into the southeast where you typically aren't accustomed to experiencing this much snowfall such as um, tennessee arkansas kentucky you need to pay close attention to this possibility of 6 to 12 inches so and right along the interstate 95 corridor it is at least based on the gfs models forecast it's going to be a tough forecast we see that pretty much most of the interstate 95 corridor outside of maybe boston is pretty much right along the border between receiving no snow or maybe one to three inches of snow we're gonna need to wait and see where the position of the soul pressure system really determine how much snow you guys will receive i'll keep you guys updated but anyways guys uh thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather calls and i hope you guys have a great day